Hello and welcome. I'm Shala from PS I Love You. Thank you for joining me Bye. as I craft through the chaos of life. Let's get started with today's package, which was sent to me by Scrap and Stamp Canada. So thank you very much, Rhea and Hortensa, for getting this package together for me to try. As you can see, it's packaged beautifully. I'm going to open it up and inside are some great goodies. Look at this. It is the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Kit. Look at that. And then they've also sent me the Gemini Foil Press Multi-Surface Foil Rolls. Uh, these are going to be great. So this is obviously something that I can use with the foil quill as well as that Gemini Foil Press um, that you can purchase separately that has the little plates. So this looks like a lot of fun. This turquoise color is gorgeous. I can't wait to use that. And then also this one here is the Holly. So this is great. Looks like I've got lots to work with. These other items I purchased myself and I'm going to save them for another project. Okay, so let's take a look at these items here. Again, these were given to me by Scrap and Stamp Canada. I have here a light and dark smooth cardstock to use. I also have my silhouette sticky mat because I'll be using the silhouette machine to do this foil quilling. I also have these other little packages that I purchased. Um, there is a silver set, this peacock multicolor, as well as this flamingo multicolor set, and they're a great price point. All right, so let's take a look at the kit itself. It has the three uh, tips to it. So it's got the fine, the standard, and the broad. The adapters to fit into your machine. We have some washi tape. And then we have some extra foil. And then you can see it has the USBs to fit into your uh, power pack, which you're going to need. This is just what I use to charge my phone. Do not plug it into the side of your silhouette machine. It will not work. So as we open up this package here to get a closer look at what we have, we've got the instruction sheet, we have three sample foils, and here are the instructions, and they're pretty, pretty standard. There's not a lot in there really to tell you. It's got the quick start guide. It shows you um, how to put it into the machine, um, so that's really great. Uh, we've got some information of some safety precautions, the warranty, um, as well as the foil quill setup. Now, I didn't find it had a lot of information, but it does have some tips and tricks. And as well, it does recommend that you don't use it past three hours. So just keep that in mind when you're using it, not to use it, you know, all day. You will want to allow the uh, quill also to uh, heat up for five minutes. So let's take everything out of the packaging here. And here's that broad tip. So that's that nice navy blue. You can see there that that inside metal tip is pretty, pretty thick. So that would be for, great for some, you know, larger filling. And then this is our standard tip. This is the teal color. I'll just remove it here. And as you can see, it's uh, it's got that again standard tip. It's you know kind of a medium medium size, so I guess maybe for your average average filling or average quilling items. And then this light pink one here is our fine tip, and it's a little hard to see, but it is it's a smaller tip. So that's great. Now what we're going to look at is, this is just the standard washi tape. Uh, they do send it with you, so if you do run out of that, you can use regular washi tape. And then these here are the casings uh, that you would put into your machine. So the A is for the silhouette, the B is for the Cricut, and then um, there is some more for the other types of machines. The C is for the Cricut and the D is for the Sizzix. So if I turn it over here, you can see that the rest of those items are taped to the back of the package. So I'll just uh, actually take these two off so I don't lose them. And I'll remove this little baggie that they have back here. Set the rest of the packaging aside. And then in here we have some more items. So I'm going to open that up. 
and then I can, you know, store these ones in there. So there's that little metal plate in there, and I'll show you how to use that in a bit, but I don't want to lose these pieces in the meantime. Let's take a look at the little sample rules they give us. So we do have a silver, um, a gold, and a rose gold. And then we'll take a look at all of these foils that were provided, as well as the ones that I purchased. So I have a lot to work with here, and I'm going to see what I can get through today. All right, I do want to show you this little metal piece. It is called the heat shield, and it goes underneath the tip of the, your foil quill so that it doesn't melt anything on your machine. So that's kind of important. We'll head over there and I'll show you how I insert the quill into my machine. Now this is the fine tip applicator. I also have my heat shield that we talked about and my power pack. Remember, do not plug the USB of the foil quill into your machine. This is the A adapter and that goes into your housing unit of your silhouette. And it just simply slides in like you would normally put in your blade. So that's fairly simple. I'm going to screw this onto the quill just so it is snug. Do not over tighten it. It's secure so now it's ready to go. I can place it into that carrier piece. Nice and snug making sure that I push that unit back in so it's secure. I'll just remove the twist tie from here. And when I pull the cord you can see it's not very long at all. So you're going to need a power pack or another power supply. So first things first, let's make sure that this little metal piece is underneath our tip so that it doesn't melt anything when I plug it in. Hmm, doesn't seem to be fitting in nicely anywhere. I kind of struggle here. What to do? And then I realize, oh, maybe I will lift that roller bar of my silhouette machine from the right. Yes, that works. So use this little roller piece here. We're going to lift that roller unit up and then it slides nicely underneath that tip. Just have to remember to lower it again when we put our mat in. So go ahead and plug this into your power pack. And I'm struggling as to which way this goes. I had it right the first time. Once that goes in, you can see that the light lights up on the heat quill or the foil quill itself. So if I unplug it, you can see that the light goes out. It's not heating up. I plug it in, the light is on, and that will indicate to you that it is going to get hot. I'm just going to push my power pack out of the way and make sure that my cords are out of the way as well. And now I'm just going to let this heat up. It says five minutes. I'm going to do 10 minutes just in case. All right, that was pretty simple. The next thing we want to do is get our cardstock and foil ready. I'm going to remove this protective sheet from my silhouette mat. This is the standard 12 by 12. And I have my A2 size card base. So you're just going to stick it down like you normally would with your cardstock if you're doing a typical cut. Now the hardest part is to figure out which color foil you're going to use. I'm going to start off with the stuff that they gave in the package. Uh, this is the silver. Now my biggest pet peeves is when companies do this. They put tape on the end of um, whether it be vinyl, foil, um, it just it really bugs me because it ends up ruining a portion of your product. And so I'm trying to be very careful here so that this foil that you can see is really thin and flimsy that it doesn't rip as I'm trying to take this washi tape off of it. Um, you definitely don't want this to stick down to your mat because it will ruin your mat for sure. So what I want to do is making sure that this is smaller than my cardstock piece so that it doesn't stick. Now I think the best thing to do is maybe put a piece of larger cardstock underneath Although I'm going to measure it and see if I can perhaps get away without doing that. Again, I'm trying to open this up very carefully because they have it rolled so tight it makes it hard to uh, work with. So I'll figure out how much I need. Again, being careful not to stick it to that mat. Alright, I think what I want to do here 
is I want to get the larger piece of cardstock. I just don't want to take the chance of having it stick down. So I'll lay these two pieces together. I'm going to speed up the process because it does take me a while uh, to get everything lined up. This is the trickiest part of the whole process. Um, I'm going to trim down this foil so that it is the size of my A2 size card. And then I like that the packages, the flat packages, are going to be a lot easier to deal with, I think. I'm going to make sure it's taped down around all the edges and you want to make sure that that foil is absolutely as flat as you possibly can make it. Making sure that you use the washi tape all around the edges to do that. If it hangs over the edge of your mat, that's okay, just fold it over. Again, the great thing about this is you can use just regular washi tape. Uh, the stuff that they've sent in the package, it's, it's nothing special, it's just uh, what they send with it. So if you run out of this, you can definitely use whatever washi tape you have on hand. Now, this is a process. It's not going well for me. The more I try to get it flat, I think the worse it gets. So just do your best. All right, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm going to go over to my program. I've imported an image that I took off the internet, this beautiful poppy, and I've sized my piece to be five and a half by four and a quarter, which is the size of my A2 size panel. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a trace of this image. Um, so I've gone ahead and done that and I'll step you through exactly how I did. That little butterfly piece here, that's your uh, trace area that you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the area that I want to trace. You're going to use this little threshold portion. You can see that I'm just dragging it up and down to intensify that uh, yellow. Wherever that yellow is, that's where it's going to trace. I'm going to trace the entire image. And then that'll be what um, is going to be etched onto my cardstock. So I've changed my settings here, cardstock plane, I'm going to be using sketch, and I'm going to be using the force of 7 and the speed of 10. I saw that on Silhouette School, so if Melissa from Silhouette School thinks it's right, we'll go ahead and use that. I'm going to head back over to my um, silhouette machine here. It's been heating up for 10 minutes. I'm going to remove that plate. I'm going to see if it's very hot. It, it's actually not hot at all. So that's good. The unit itself, I can feel that there's heat coming off of it. So I guess the plate is working. I'll set that aside and now I'm going to load my um, paper in. But I, did, I wanted to double check to see if it was hot because that plate wasn't warm. It is warm on that base of that. Just definitely don't touch that metal tip or, or you will get burned. So it seems to be working. It seems to be warm. I'm going to trust it and let it do its thing. I've got my uh, carrier sheet, my silhouette mat, and I'm just going to remove any of stray cat hair that I seem to have acquired on my walkover, making sure that you uh, put that um, feeder bar back down because we did lift it up for that metal piece. I'll load in my mat and now I can head back to the computer. I've hit start on that and as you can see it is working away. Um, it does seem to be taking a little bit of time. This is real time that you're watching it on. Um, so it's, it seems to be doing its thing. I don't see any bunching. Um, I don't smell anything burning or on fire. So I'll take you for a closer look here to show you what it is actually doing. Um, a little hard to see, but it is doing some great, fine, fine detailed work. I think this is going to work out well, guys. I, I got to tell you, I was very skeptical in the beginning. I wasn't really sure if this was something that I needed, but it seems to be working. So let's take a look. It's finished now. We're going to unload the mat and let's see what happened. I'm going to put my little uh, protector plate back in just so it doesn't melt anything on my machine. And let's take a look at this. You guys, look at that. That is amazing. Let's get a closer look. Look at that fine, fine detail. Now, that was a pretty um, 
detailed image. Like I, I picked a hard one for it for my first go and let's see if it worked out. I, my first thought is this is going to be great. I'm very optimistic about this. So we're going to remove the washi tape and let's see what is happening underneath here. This is like Christmas for me. So very carefully removing that washi tape. And I'm going to stick that to my glass mat. I feel like I can use this again. I don't want to just throw it away. And I can't wait. Let's lift it up a bit. What's going on underneath? Again, very carefully trying to remove that. Oh my goodness. Look at this, you guys. That is fantastic. I couldn't have picked a more detailed image to start off with if I tried and this thing did not disappoint. Look at that shine. Look at that detail. Oh my goodness. So we have some extra foil here. I feel like I can use this on another project. There's some extra stuff down here at the bottom. I definitely don't want to waste that. So I'm going to set this aside and keep it and see if there's anything else I can do because that is pretty amazing. I feel like I could do um, you know, a reverse negative image of this. Um, I, I just feel like I don't want to throw this away. I feel like I can do something else. So I'll try and save this. I'll see if I can pull up that washi tape. And um, if you're like me, I like to save everything that I can. But look at that. Like That is silly amazing. Try and pull that off. That seems to be all right. Set it aside. Enough with that. Let's Let's take a look at this. I am so excited. Look at this detail. That is flippin' amazing. Look at the detail of that. Gorgeous. There's there's so much coming to my mind. Now it skipped a little bit there, but that was probably user error on my part. Look at the rest of this. It's so smooth. I'm nothing pushing through on the back side. I am so impressed and so surprised and happy with how that turned out. That shine, my word, that is going to be beautiful. I, I can't get over those details on the um, stems there of that little blossom. That is just crazy, just crazy. Can you imagine all the things you can do? Wedding invitations, uh, baby shower announcements. My word, look at like look at this. This is the card I created with it. How fantastic is that? So, for my first project, I am saying that that is a win. Look at that. That is crazy. So that was one of the detailed images with that fine tip pen. Let's try something else. I saw this image. Now all the images, this image here in particular is actually uh, from Silhouette Studio. I'll be Gnome for Christmas because gnomes are a big deal right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, make sure this image is centered. Um, I understand that there's also some USBs that you can purchase with SVG files that you can use as well, but if you do have a Silhouette machine, um, as you can see here, I'm just using a, a typical image that they have and I'm going to convert it here. So I'll highlight it and I'm using that threshold again uh, to do this trace. Now you can play around with the threshold and you can play around with that uh, despeckle threshold as well. Um, and the scale button, but I'll show you what happens if you play around too much. Sometimes you just, if you get a good trace right off the bat, you need to leave it alone. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to play around with this despeckle, and you can see that it starts taking off some of the letters, some of the buttons on that gnome. Um, so yeah, you want to be careful when you play around with these. And as soon as I hit that scale button, that's where things go really wonky. It starts taking away that good uh, trace and it's really really difficult to get that back so I would actually use or leave this particular scale button alone I wouldn't play around with it much at all because once you start moving it you're kind of you're kind of screwed so I'm going to cancel everything and I'm going to start over again hit that little trace butterfly I'm going to select my trace area it's a pretty good trace right off the bat um, I'm going to leave the despeckle I think alone I'm just going to play a wee little bit with this threshold to try and um, make the edges a little more crisper and get a little bit finer detail. Now I'm going to hit that trace 
and we'll take a look at what we have. Slide it off, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put that back and I will get rid of the original image. So I can delete that. Go ahead and center this all back up to my piece of paper. And now what I'm going to do is hit that sketch button on the bottom there. Now there's a couple different sketch options that we can use. There's these edge effects. You want to keep that on the circle. Um, if you click that you see it doesn't do anything. Um, the next one we want to talk about is these sketches here, these fill buttons. So I hit that. That doesn't really um, do too much for me. I want to actually increase this just a little bit to see if that makes a difference on the fill. Um, we'll play a little bit with the spacing. Um, the higher up you go, the larger the spacing between um, the markings. I switch it up here to that cross image. I'm just playing around here to see what kind of fills I can get inside of these images. And I think um, from what I can see, I think the best one to use, honestly, um, is going to be that cross hatch one. Um, as I look here, it could either this one or the cross hatch one is going to be better. So you can play around with your angle um, and then your spacing. Once you start playing around with that spacing, you can see that it starts to fill in the image. And that's what we want. So the higher you go in your spacing, um, the further apart the etching is going to be. So again, just playing around to see which one gives me the best fill. And it's either this one or the cross hatch. And I think I'll stick with the cross hatch for this. All right. So now that we've got that all set up, I'm going to resize my image. Make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to center it again on my mat or on my cardstock piece that I want to use. And then that's ready to go to send it off to the Silhouette machine. So I'll go ahead and hit my send button here to look at my settings. So again, it's the cardstock plane and we want to change that action to the sketch. For the sketch pen, we don't want to cut anything. And then you have your force and speed that you can see there. And I think what I'll do is I'll just leave that and this time I am going to be using the standard tip. So I've already got that um, in my machine and it's already heating up. Um, I let that heat up for about five, 10 minutes again and I can go ahead and send that off to my machine. And we will take a look at the results that we have. I'm just going back to my design and making sure everything looks good before um, it is sent off. Make sure I have the right tool. That's always important. And then, yes, you can see that I've already switched it. I've got it heating up. I'm going to remove that little plate. It's warm, everything is fine. I've got my foil on my cardstock, it's all ready to go. I can slide it into the machine. Remembering to put that bar back in place after uh, you remove the metal plate. And then we'll load that in. All right, coming back to the program going to go ahead and make sure everything is set. I, I think I want to maybe move my speed down a little bit on second thought. I, I don't want to um, have it go too fast and not actually melt the foil. So I'm going to put the speed down to 5 and I'll leave the force at 17 and I'll go ahead and send that. So it says it's generating the cut job which actually is going to be our foiling and we'll take a look at it working away. So this is at real time speed for that. Everything seems to be going well. And we'll let it do its magic. 
All right, the machine has finished and everything looks good. I'm going to remove it from the machine. I'm going to use my little metal protector plate here and place it underneath that quill just so we don't melt anything. It's all set. All right, let's take a look at how our quilling turned out. Look at this. That is looking pretty good already. Now this foil that I'm using is the uh, Gemini foil press foil. So you can see it's got more of a, a metallic shine to it. That's the Aurora. So a little bit different than the uh, foil that came with the foil quill kit. And we'll remove this and look at that you guys. Another great foil quill. This is my second one and it turned out amazing. Look at the detail. So this is that mid tip and yet it's still got the details of those snowflakes and even the little lines on their coats. That's that's amazing. Um, the, the script, the fill in the script, maybe if I made it a little smaller um, in the cross hatches it would look better but honestly like that looks pretty darn good. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, the shine, so amazing. Look at these two together. So I've done an extremely detailed one with the fine tip and then I did a larger fill with the standard tip and like that's crazy. So that was used with the foil quill foil on the first one and then um, I think these sheets would be really great because they're flat it would be a lot easier to use as opposed to them in the roll so um, this one is silver swan you get 30 sheets in there um, I think that would be great I'd recommend you know going with the the flat uh, foil as opposed to those on the royal rolls however with that said um, that Gemini foil uh, press paper um, is great so I, I give this this thing two thumbs up I I'm so impressed like look at these so I was a huge skeptic guys I thought you know everyone was saying it was the product of the year I'm like yeah I don't know I don't know if I really need it I don't think I'm gonna you know get it I don't think it's something I'd use very often um, and if it wasn't for scrap and stamp giving it to me um, I don't know if I would have purchased it but now that I have it Oh yes, I, I want to foil all the things. And so here I am trying to figure out what to do with these negative pieces that I have left over. Because I don't want to waste this. Now that I, I know what it can do, I'm foiling all the things. So what I have here is I've put it on um, this negative piece from that gnome uh, foiling onto a piece of red cardstock because I figure I can do a negative image transfer. I'm just using a piece of cardstock to fold it over um, to create like a carrier sheet and I'm going to try putting it in my laminator. Um, it is a heat activated foil so let's give it a try and see if it works. I'm just going to trim off the washi tape here just so it doesn't damage my laminator. And we'll fold that over and let's head on over to the laminator. So this is just my scotch laminator. You can see here it's in that carrier sheet. I've had that heating up for several minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and feed that through. And fingers crossed that this works. So sadly I ran it through twice and it did not work. Um, that really is disappointing. I even put it in my heat press that I have for um, HTV vinyl transfer and um, really hoping that the higher heat would work for that. Uh, we'll take it off here and as you can see um, nothing transferred. Uh, I did try a little craft iron that I have. I thought metal on metal might work. Um, it did transfer a few specks of foil but nothing near uh, what I had hoped in the end. So the end result for this is can you use the negative image um, with a laminator, a heat press, or an iron? The answer to that is no, which at the end of the day made me very sad because I don't like to waste all this foil. So uh, yeah, you can see here nothing worked, so that's a big thumbs down. Now I admit I did not try it with the uh, foil that came with the foil quill but I have a feeling it's the same result.
Moving on to our next project, this is the holly of the Gemini foil. Um, I used the bold tip and just another uh, file from Silhouette. I was not happy with this outcome. In the light, when the light shines on it, it's not too bad, um, but it is really spotty and you can see here, um, I didn't tape my a piece all the way around with the washi tape and the foil moved and lifted and I didn't I was reusing the washi tape too so maybe if I used fresh washi tape it would have held but it still has you know some skips and misses there um, it just yeah if the lights shining on it it looks really pretty but when you're looking uh, straight on it's less than impressive and again that's the bold tip that navy blue one I did try it again with some smaller cross hatches, making sure it was taped all the way around. Look right there, I had washi tape in the way uh, so it didn't have great connection to the foil and it missed the top of the star. Uh, again, you can see the, the lines there, some skips. When the light's shining on it, it doesn't look too bad, but again, not the outcome that I was hoping for. So that was a bit disappointing. I, I can honestly say that the fine tip was phenomenal. The standard tip was phenomenal. The bold tip really let me down. I'm gonna move on here to this flamingo pack that I have. So you, again, it's these beautiful pink colors. You get 30 uh, pieces in here. So that's, um, what is that? It's five colors, so you'll get six sheets of each. All right, look at this gorgeous pink. I'm going to use it on this cardstock that I have, and I love that it's nice and flat, but this cardstock that I'm using is a shimmer cardstock, so it already has some shine and shimmer in it, and apparently some cat hair, story of my life. Um, but I think that would look really pretty. I went and used another, uh, just another image from Silhouette Studio, and uh, a sentiment, I filled it with the same cross hatching that I did with the gnomes and look at that, beautiful. This did take some time though. I used the fine tip pen, uh, but I love the results that it gives us. Look at that shine. Um, again, the detail is phenomenal. Like, look at that, that is fantastic. I wanna show you quickly two last projects. Uh, again, a very detailed image from Silhouette Studio using the fine tip quill. Look at this with that beautiful teal color on that shiny cardstock, just stunning. I love the detail. Um, I used a little bit heavier pressure on it, uh, so it did leave a little bit more indent on the paper, but still look at this. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then you can see the uh, card that I managed to create with that. I did do a border of uh, teal cardstock around the edges and I really think that that finishes the card off nicely. Some beautiful shine. I wanna show you a bit of a close up on that. Um, it's just stunning, the results that I got. I, am, I couldn't be happier. I did wanna try this on one more medium and that is on vellum. I went ahead and ran that through, same image, same file. Um, everything worked out great. It's got great detail and shine. The only thing is um, my paper did warp a little bit, but I think that's all right. I can flatten it out and um, add that to a card, no problem. I think it just really ups your card game when you can add some foiling like this to it, especially with all this detail. So all in all, I really think that my mind has changed. I think this is the product of the year. I do think it is something um, that it would be a great addition to any crafter's craft room. Uh, there are so many projects that you can use this with. Uh, you can also use it on uh, leather sheets as well, so that's very exciting. And I did push the envelope with a lot of the images that I chose today. So I did mention that I have uh, a little secret and my secret is that for Black Friday Scrap and Stamp has some amazing deals and one of them just happens to be this foil quill kit. 
for Black Friday, they're offering this kit to you at 50% off. Now that's while supplies last, so make sure you get your order in. That is a phenomenal steal of a deal. I'm going to leave all the links down below and over at the Scrap and Stout blog to these products, so be sure to check that out. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today and sharing your time with me. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out these other videos that I have for you. Thanks so much guys and enjoy the rest of your day.